back. Random TV reviews, your girl, Linda. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, coming in with this week's Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 2, Episode 3, The Gift of Escortion. Tuh. Go ahead and get the preliminaries out the way. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Consider hitting that subscribe button. If you come back every week, then just know that we appreciate ya. Yeah. Make sure that your bell is in so every time that we post a video, you'll get a notification. If you want to keep up with us on a day-to-day, -day, just make sure you're following us on Instagram at Random TV Reviews. And if you're interested in our lifestyle vlogs, that is Life With Us TV. And as always, I'm going to start putting my hair details down in the description yeah. field because people keep asking. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover all bases because this is a crochet braid install. Some people are like, I don't know how to do that. But they know how to do weave and they know how to do wigs. I'm going to find this style in every one of those. No excuses. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. And can I go on a rant for like two and a half seconds? Hit them with it. I hate... When the shows that I like come on on weekends. Because if you're like us, everything has to wait till the weekend. You do all your housework, your fun stuff, your grown yeah. up and stuff. All of that is done on the weekend. So when a show comes on and you're a reviewer like we are, you kind of got to figure out how to fit, fit it in. a review in. Yeah. And usually it has to come on a Sunday late like this. So we apologize <clears> for being late. We just have real life going on over here. So, you know. But let's get into this episode. <laughs> I'm going to say right off the bat, it wasn't a lot going on, but people's true colors are starting to show even more. more. So last week, we saw that Mel asked the security officer to put Tisha out, right? So this week, we pick up with that. Tisha is like, I can't even believe that this is about to happen. So she lets Kimmy know, like, Kimmy, can you believe that they are putting me out of this event? Like, real talk, like... He's standing here escorting me out. Kimmy was like, come on, yo. No, we're going to go in the back. We're going to find Mel, and we're going to talk this thing through. Because, <clears throat> see, it's always a catch-22 when you try to play mediator yeah, and get in between to be the peacemaker. Because sometimes you're just going to have to let adults be adults and duke it out without you being in the midst. Exactly. Because, like we always said, somebody is going to take their turn at swinging and it's always the person in the middle that's going to get, get hit. hit. Exactly. And that's exactly what Every happened. Time. They went in the back. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think that if there wasn't a entourage of people, if there wasn't cameras, if there wasn't Martell there, I think that Tish and Mel would have had a good conversation back there. But because the cameras were there, there is this play up of, yeah. no, 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 I'm going to stick to my guns and I'm going to go ahead and put you out. Because real talk, if Mel didn't want to hear anything that Tisha had to say, one glimpse of her presence in that door frame, she would have got the buck out. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And like they said last week in the comment section, it ain't like production didn't tell Tisha when to show up and have her already mic'd up. So exactly. Exactly. But yeah. we gonna make we just go act like this is real for real for real. <laughs> Maybe I'm built a little different. I ain't the one to try to insert myself or be present somewhere where nobody don't want me. Me either. If you don't want me there. I ain't fitting to show up. I got something else I could be doing. Yeah, because that give you a leg up to be able to embarrass me like you was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And I don't do embarrassment well. Not <laughs> at all. No. So, you know, so a lot came out in that back right. Um, because Martel even was like, let me go ahead and apologize. And um, Mel was like, what are you apologizing for? And I wanted to hear what yeah, it is that he was yeah. ready to apologize for. But we found out that within <laughs> that little kerfuffle, as they would say, that um, Marceau has called the police on Martel because he felt threatened for his life. No, he put a restraining order. Was it a restraining order? I think you said a restraining order. Well, the cops were called. What the buck happened? Yeah. What, and this yeah. is what is driving yeah. me crazy <laughs> about this show right here, like. The show is being aired as if everyone is keeping up with their lives off screen. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm one of those people, I'm kind of privy to some information because if I don't get it, there are people that will drop it in the inbox, the DMs yeah. or whatever. But I don't follow the Holtz at all on social media. No. I do follow the Scots because <clears throat> I enjoy them. But I don't get every inch of their life. So when mm. they're bickering and going back and forth and stuff like that, if someone doesn't bring me the short version of the long, I don't oh, know yeah. about it. Oh, no. So yeah. it's almost like they're they're filming this thing as if everyone knows the details of why Tisha and Mel 
fell out again. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And also and and, 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 and Martel. Martel. It don't make no like, sense. So what the buck happened? Because usually when people put restraining orders, they either been threatened to be beat up, threatened to be killed. Some kind of harm was said mm -hmm. for that to happen. Or there was a fight that broke out. Now, I know that, you know, things kind of turned left last season between them because Martel was like, you know, my relationship is not a joke, you know, but... And that was you confusing, would, too. Yeah, was, because they you were joking. Yeah, 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 they always have been joking about it, so I'm like... And not in a malicious way, like, yeah. dude, get your skit together. So, it's like, where, where did the turn make? And, you know, we already know that Melody and Martel are the executive producers of the show, so if the Scots ain't lining up as... Friends like that, where y'all can still trust them and y'all supposed to be in a good place, but it'll make a turn for the cops to get just, involved. Just that's them that's the that's some serious that's some serious skit right there, man. And we needs to know because yeah, if it's airing out in front of on? us, we need to know it all. But yeah. I guess we will learn, you know, down the road. But I want to know now. Yeah, I want to know so now. That we yeah, can, <laughs> so that we can speak on this day accurately. You know what I'm saying? So back there, like I said, nothing really got done. Mel held to her guns, and she was like. Because Tisha was like, Mel, I came here to support you. I know that this is a big event for you. So I wanted to be the bigger person and to show my support. And Mel was like, a text could have done. A text that said maybe we could talk, you know, before we get into a public eye. Something like that would have worked. And I agree with all of that. And like my husband said, Tisha should have never showed up there. No. But let's go back to season one. Mel gives you mixed signals on how she wants you to be friends with her. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that when she first um, had that whole thing when Martel started cheating and all of the friends said that they were hearing the buzz around, you know, the neighborhood, they was reaching out to Mel. Mel would not respond back to them. Mm -hmm. But when they confronted her with that, she was like, yeah, I wasn't doing that, but maybe you just need to pop up on me or maybe you just need to come to my house and see if I'm okay. If you are the kind of person that do not reciprocate when someone's trying to reach out to you, then you are telling people to pop up mm -hmm. on you. So maybe that's what Tisha felt like she had to do in this instance because in past time, that's what you've told them to do. If Pretty much if I ignore you, you need to force yourself on me. I don't know. It's just weird. I, I wouldn't have still went to her. I still wouldn't have went. I wouldn't have came to her <laughs> private event. Oh, no. No, nah, I wouldn't have did that. Because, because I'm not one of the people. I'm not giving you the yeah, recipe exactly. to make me a disaster. I would have popped up on you, where, like you said, when nobody was around. It was mm -hmm. just me and whoever the person is to try to, you know, squash whatever beef is going on. But I would never brought it public. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. as they're escorting um, Letitia out, now they're starting to do the personal digs. Martel, was it Martel or was it Melody that was like, yeah, you should be used to this kind of treatment or something like that. And what I gather from that was, you know that most of the, <laughs> some of the people <laughs> on this show have been arrested before. So that's what I thought that she was talking about. <laughs> um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I'm like, Mel, your husband got a little record record too. Exactly. So don't bring up jokes that can go well, can get, get smack you in your too. face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, coming in here looking like a picnic bag. What, a picnic basket or a picnic blanket a or something picnic like dress that? dress on, yeah, whatever. And I said... And she was like, it's a semi-formal event, but if you had gotten an invitation, you would have known that. And I looked around this can in the crowd. I said, she looked as dressed as everyone else in the crowd. But let, but Mel, you look like you were going to dance with the stars. You look <laughs> cute. But but we're not doing this. So I, I don't know. So leading on to from that, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Because like I said, not a lot, lot, of, yeah, bleh, yeah. Not a lot happened. Exactly. So now, because Kimmy has put herself in the middle of this again, which we already know, Kimmy has gotten her hands smacked for playing mediator. Just stay the buck out of it and let the grown folks duke it out. Because mm -hmm. like I said, if you swing, and one of them swing, the person in the middle is the one that's going to get hit. Yep. And guess what happened? As soon <laughs> yep. as they got mad about the situation, then Martel turns around from the conversation that he had with Kimmy on last week's episode where he went to the house and was like, thank you all for showing up at the baby shower, you know. Thanks for not picking sides you know, and, and all this, that. This. Yeah. And Kimmy brought up, you know, it seems like y'all lives are, you know, on the up and up. Um, Mel looks happy. But on the other side, then you got Arian over here. She's very unhappy. So it's like 
this this coin that you keep tossing. Someone's happy, someone's miserable. Someone's mm -hmm. miserable, someone's happy. And to me, that wasn't anything that should have been brought up. I, Kevin, you know I love you, but I would have never brought that skit up. <laughs> I would have kept my mouth out of that period. But this is what happens. He used that as an opportunity to flip it and make you the bad guy in the eyes of Mel. It was like, yeah. And when I went over her house, she going to bring up that stuff, talk about some this, this, and how she feel. But I guess she would feel like that since she was a side chick one time too. But like, come on. So, so now we back yeah. on that. <laughs> but I, I like how Mel handled it. Mel was like, mm, no. They, you know, they were introduced while, you know, her, uh, Maurice was still married. But they didn't start talking until the divorce was finalized. But uh, uh Martel still was trying to dig into it like, mm -mm, say, yeah. nope. So then we see Martel and Mel, they go to the doctor's appointment. And she's pretty much getting a um, a checkup. You know, he read it. He read it to dive back Damn, in. Damn, back in, yep. And he said, "I feel you, bro." <laughs> <laughs> and he said that um he wants five children, and she was like, mm, "I don't know about all that." And they're still going back and forth, back and forth. And the doctor was like, "Listen, I'm gonna go ahead and set up an appointment for yeah. something else because it doesn't seem like either one of you all are in a position to make lifelong decisions, decisions yeah, right now. Yeah, y'all need I'll to say, wait. They're going right. Yeah. I'll that doctor crazy though. Oh, she was funny. <laughs> I didn't expect that out of her. That was nah. the funny thing. Especially when she said what her type was, she was trying to find a man that's been married for at least a year and got a vasectomy. Vasectomy? Me. I said, oh, oh like, okay. all right. I'm glad she was just joking, but. Uh -huh. So, oh, and come to find out, Letitia said that it had got so bad with Mar um, Martel that she had to block him because he was saying all kinds of crazy stuff to her on text message. I said, go ahead and post them, Tisha. Post them. We'll, be, we'll read them. We'll read them. <laughs> so Tisha calls Marceau while she's in the parking lot of getting put out. And Marceau is just like me. Yeah, he done. It's like... And you're surprised. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you went You know how it's going to go down yeah, before you even got there. You've been friends with these people long enough to know how they would roll. And yeah. you pretty much got what you went to look for. And you went to look for an embarrassment. You got it. God darn it. It is not what you really look for, but that's what you got. Yeah. You put yourself in a position where this this the card that was dealt to you. So you're just going to have to live with it. But I do love the fact that because all of us were kind of baited into this show thinking that we were going to be looking at black excellence and black yeah. people building. I know and, I did. <laughs> yeah, building um, the communities yeah. and doing big things in business and real estate. I'm happy to see that at least they're showing us that um, Letitia and Marceau are building their um, their sh uh, their plaza, their shopping plaza. Yeah. And then they have the um, black, the cigar lounge. Oh, that's going to be hot. Yeah, I think it's open now, if I'm not mistaken. Marceau, yeah. let me know if it's open or not. Yeah, especially if it's anything like the um, the lounge we got here in Richmond, man. Because that's going to be on, well, post-COVID. Uh, it was Pre-COVID. Yeah, pre-COVID. Yeah, pre it was on and popping. I'm like... Every Friday and Saturday, you lucky if you can get a spot in yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a reservation at 10, 10 one your table's gone. So I'm not sure how you got y'all lounge set up, but if you get a nice jazz band in there, then after the jazz band around about 10, 11 o'clock, you, you let a DJ come in there and play some music. You got but, it. you know, so you get best of both worlds, be relaxed with some jazz, and then you can get a little turn up off the DJ without the fighting. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about that if you ain't doing it. I know that. that's right. So, while we talk about Tisha and Marceau, Marceau has a conversation with Tisha because <laughs> Tisha got a lot going on this week. She got put out an event. She has an event where she has to speak. And Marceau is not the happiest about how things are transpiring in the household. Marceau has come to the, come to the, <laughs> where the rubber meets the road. And he's like, okay, you want to get out the house. You say you want to find yourself. That's cool. It is what it is. But now it seems like you're not doing anything. Like you're just walking away and this, that, and the third. And he was comparing that to being a, <laughs> a father that goes out and his life is not his own. But really, Marceau, you you can't compare it to being a mom. Like a mom, like a father can just be like, oh, I'm being ready to run to the store. Because know. they know mama got the kids. Yeah, It's mom. different when you have mama mm -hmm. at the house. It be like, oh, oh, oh. And you'd be like, oh, 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 I don't know how to cook. You didn't yeah. know the, the little boy was allergic to peanut butter. And, like, <laughs> it, from, it is different. And from we here, it's not easy to find a babysitter either. No, that's what yeah. we had none of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, so, look, 
I look at the road from that way, and I yeah, go, yeah, yeah. I we enjoy our freedom. Hello, come and go as we want. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Let the church say amen. Amen. So what else we'll talk about? Uh, rah, rah, rah. Tisha's mama. <laughs> So now Tisha has to tell everybody in her family about what had happened, right? So she is setting up to speak on her podcast. Man, the way she walked up inside of that studio, man. Mama Wanda walked in there with her I don't need no hateration, holleration boots on. What? I said, Mama Wanda, you better serve it up. I love Mama Wanda. So Mama Wanda comes in there and I'm looking like she got the necklace on with the lock. Oh, I see. She you. got I said, the earrings. With I said you can't give black people no money. Man, I <laughs> love me some country black people, man. I promise you. Can't you. give them no money, man. Man, or camera. Yeah. Cause we, oh, it don't even matter. Cause we gonna put the twenty on ten. When she walked in there with the merge blush, I don't need no hateration, <laughs> hotteration, freaking boots on. I was fit to be done. Mm. Mama Wanda, you look good, honey. Yeah, you do. So she tells her mama what had happened. And Mama Wanda said, hold on. You what? Got, first of all, you should have slapped the bitch. Nah, she said, no, nah, you should have took me. I was like, oh, hell no. Yeah. Nah. Because Tisha was me. like, Tisha was like, I got things to lose. I'm trying to build business. I ain't got time to be yeah. out here fighting in these streets. That's very good of you, Tisha. Mama was like, you should have took me. Got uh, daughter. I'm so I ain't a, got nothing to lose. <laughs> I'm at an old age. I got everything that I need. Yep. Let knock if you buck. <laughs> It's always good to have a knuck if you buck person on your team. Hear me. Yeah, but you just can't take them everywhere at all. My sister. Yeah, you can't take them and everywhere. And your sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it just something. We pop got off. some. It's over. Yeah, you know, everybody gonna be in cuffs, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Remember that night we went <laughs> we went downtown for uh, your oh. sister's birthday? <laughs> just yeah. picture somebody trying to back a car up parallel park between two cars drunk. Just, just think about that. It was none of us. No one, none of it us. Won't us. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a lot to be told down there yeah. downtown that night. <laughs> but anywho, so let's get over there to Maurice and Kimmy's house. Um, they're having a conversation. And shout out to Maurice because he does have Monster at his house yeah. full time. And shout out, man, for passing the bar. We haven't hey. said yeah. Yes, indeed, bro. That's Congrats. We should have been said it. Forgot it. We should have said it when we first came on in the first episode. They ain't gave us our Scott yeah, time yet, yeah, man. Yeah, so we didn't think about it. Yeah, congrats, man. I know you put in the hard work and it paid off. That's a lot. Yeah. Speaking of, him and Kimmy are having this conversation, right? And it reminded us so much of our own household with a little less money than y'all got. But anyway, <laughs> um, Maurice is one of those people that because he's an entrepreneur, everybody in the world needs to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> This dude right here, because we're YouTubers, everybody has to become a yeah, YouTuber. Yeah, everybody got to open a YouTube channel. That's yeah. why I was laughing so hard. So Kimmy was like, everybody is not built to be an entrepreneur. I like knowing that my check every two weeks is going to be X amount of dollars and it's going to be dropped on command. And she was like, I love my career. And that's the thing, like, yeah, I think sometimes when we do speak about, you know, careers and being an entrepreneur yeah. or your future plans for your life and stability... Mm -hmm. It always does go to entrepreneurship. But like she said, that's not for everyone. That's right. What if every doctor was like, I want to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and go to private practice? Could everyone afford private practice mm -hmm. or a concierge type of physician? You know what I'm saying? I just so, tell people just, just find just what you Just do what love. makes you happy. Yeah, what you that you can't wait to get up every day and do. Yeah, and I'm both. Yeah. I'm one of yeah. those people, I'm going to go wherever the money goes as long as I'm not like critically unhappy. Like right now, I feel like I want to just take my job and just do like that. But the money's great and um, the stability is great. I have 33 days of paid vacation a freaking year. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to start over at 40. How old am I? 41? 41. At 41 years old. But at the same time, I'm building my business over here as That's well. Right. So That's when right. this right here is higher than this, go on somewhere. Because see, what we after, we after is, is what um, Maurice said to uh, Kimmy to get freedom. See, he right. want her to become an entrepreneur to get freedom. Now, it all depends on what type of entrepreneurship you go into for freedom because sometimes you work as hard on your business yeah. as you're doing on your job. Harder. But at the same time, you're building that for yourself. So you want to make sure you're building something that you still can be free to do what you want and still be able to run the business. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We had one, but we, we let Walmart... Um, 
Yeah. We, we'll talk about that one. Uh, <laughs> but y'all see grocery delivery? That was us. Yeah, we and did. And Walmart that. came after us and tried to sue us, y'all. Yeah, they did. So, uh, we was on and popping, yeah. We, yeah, made, we, we made, was dominating. Yeah, we made a few mistakes and, you know, stuff like that, but... And it man. was just easier to let it go than to fight, so... Yeah. But we still got a few more in us. Exactly. Boom. All right, and the last thing that I'm going to speak about, like I said, not a lot not a lot happened. But let's talk about um, Mel and Destiny. Destiny came over to see Mel, right? And, of course, this was after everything had happened. So, of course, they speak about that a little bit. But now we get to know a little bit more about Destiny because the first interaction with Destiny was messy. Now we're trying to figure out who is this girl and, and what does she bring to the show. Destiny is pregnant. Mm -hmm. Her and LeBaric, LeBaric, right? Yeah. Are newlyweds. And it seemed like they had a long distance relationship up until marriage. And then she moved into his place. But she doesn't really have place in his place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they really going to have to figure that thing out quickly. Like she was mm -hmm. like, she doesn't even have dishes. Like her whole life is in storage. The only thing she has at the place is her clothing. I was like, wow, that that's a lot. But she's gone through multiple miscarriages that's a lot. That's a that lot. is a lot That's mentally. a lot. Yeah. Um, and then we learned that Mel said before she had this baby, um, she had a miscarriage mm -hmm. as well. And she was like, maybe God pretty much just, you know, took care of, you know how they always say nature takes care of itself because the timing wasn't right. So she was like, even when she got pregnant with this one and all that hell was going on in her marriage, she was like, should I even abort this baby? And I was like, yeah. That's that's bad to have to be in a situation like that to, to even have to, to consider that. Yeah, yeah, to even consider that. But yeah, that's that. Them first few years of marriages is always oh, tough. Oh, they are. And everybody will have a story for you when you're trying to bring two different lives together and yeah. make them one. You know, it looks pretty on TV when this. You know, when the preachers say, um, "You now can kiss the bride." You know, I'm now pronounce you husband wife. You can kiss the bride. That look all cute and all that stuff. But when it comes time to play that out in real life, yeah, man. Because unfortunately, life does not come with a marriage pamphlet. Mm -mm. And even if it did, the pamphlet might work for you. How exactly. they write it, and I might have to scribble through there and be like, nope, nope, mm -hmm. nope, that don't work. So yeah, we, yeah, we've been married with now what eighteen years? Yeah, eighteen years, and we're still learning. Oh, it's the, it's, it's, it's for the learning. So if, you, so if you get ready to get married and you're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to get married, you know, within the first five years or so, we're going to be all doing this and doing that. I ain't trying to discourage you or not, but I'm going to tell you, your plans that you have now, life is not factored into that. Mm -mm. And life is going to happen. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but if y'all love each other, man. You're going to make it. You'll, you'll see your way through. Yeah, you're you going to make it, yeah. Yeah, but you're going to have to. There's a lot of give and take in marriage. Don't get oh, it twisted. Yeah. Can't okay. be selfish. Nope. Can't be selfish, and then you can't let everyone into the circle. Exactly. As well. Like, when it comes to our down and dirty things, like, we don't really have nothing going on, like, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, like, our finances and how we make things work in this household, mm -hmm. don't nobody have a say in none of that. Because if all of this crumbles... Y'all ain't got skit to do with this. Yeah. And y'all can't help us and you can't help us. You can't help us out of it. You couldn't help us in it. Exactly. So, mm, and no. I, I And I'll throw this piece in here for free because I was just telling my wife about this this weekend. And one thing that has been a secret sauce for us is not silently tolerating each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. So if something bothers us about the other person, it's most right. of the time couples will be like, I'm not going to say nothing to my wife or my husband because... I don't want to hurt their feelings. Shoot, up in here, <laughs> yeah. we hurt feelings all the time. Uh -huh. But that has made our marriage stronger um, because you, why let your spouse believe that, that you like something about them and they, and don't. they don't? And it don't all means that they're going to change it. Mm -mm. But I'm going to let you know that I don't like it. So that way I'm not holding on to it. So when most of the time when people's marriages blow up, it didn't blow up because that person just cheated one time. It was cheating, you know, stuff on the floor, not coming home. It's, it's stuff that's <laughs> piled on top of you that you never said nothing. And then when the cheating happened, it all blows out proportion. And people are like, what the hell happened to that? And then that argument, right? come on, be like, yeah, like, and what the hell? And your feet stink, and you don't, you let yeah. the toilet seat up. Be like, where did this 
become a problem. And ain't anybody the toilet seat, the clothes, or and nothing. Everything is piled up. It's a whole kerfuffle of stuff over years mm -hmm. that you didn't deal with. So around here, and it could be the fact that both of us are Leos. Leo's <laughs> going to let you know right off the top yep. what bothers us and what we will tolerate and what we're not going to tolerate is kind of bad. Yeah. Because, yeah. But, we don't tolerate but, the same, lot, but, but at the same time, don't get it twisted. We're not being disrespectful oh, to no. each other. Because no. some, some couples going to be like, you, I'll tell you the truth, but I'm going to be disrespectful. I'm going to tell you with, down at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm doing it to hurt your feelings to tear you down. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nah, not that. Yeah. How do we get here? I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. There was nothing else to be said about this, but hopefully um, Destiny and LeBarrick will figure that thing out. Yeah, yeah. Y'all marriage is just new and fresh. Y'all going to go through challenges, but you can make it if you just continue to work at it. Marriage is work. Well, they said it was in therapy for it. So yeah, so that, they, they, there's fruit there. They work. Hopefully on they have a good one that's not going to give them the, like you said, the invisible pamphlet. Because yeah. like you said, that skit works for some people. Some people it don't. Like in our yeah. household, we told people, we don't have roles. No. Nah, like real, now there's some things that I just won't do unless yeah. I really have to, like take out the trash or um, yard work, all of that. I, I won't do it unless I really have to do it. But yeah. anything else around this house, if it needs to be done, I'm not going to wait for Stanley to do it and vice versa. Yeah, it, it, if the dishes are in the in the sink and he walks by the sink, he's washing the dishes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or he's getting in the kitchen and he's cooking. There's no roles here because at the yeah. end of the day, this is our home. Exactly. And we have to play a equal role, role. into making this thing work. Go forward. So, yeah, yeah. you got to make sure that you're doing stuff to push your life forward. Mm -hmm. And with roles, sometimes that can be a... It's a hindrance. It can be a hindrance. Yeah, Because you be. have to wait for the other person to do their part for yeah. a part of it to be done. That's but right. at the same token... Roles work for some people's yeah. marriage. Roles, yeah. yeah. And you do said, what you're good at. Yeah. So like, I don't want somebody in my kitchen every day that can't cook just because they tired of waiting on me to get in there. No, just wait a little bit and let the person that know how to cook get in the kitchen. I, I'm going to say this in closing. What? I'd like in marriage into going shopping and trying to find something oh, nice Lord. to wear. Sometimes you got to try on a whole bunch of outfits before you find the right one that fits you perfectly to make you be popping. It's like in marriage. You got to try all the different devices that people give you, what you see on TV, your friends, or what you come up with. And whatever you find that works, do it. Do it. And no matter if the other people on the outside don't like it, don't care. Fuck them, man. As long as it's working for you, man. Straight from the VA. The Dirty, Dirty South. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.